I'm here in the fabrication section of my little workshop and today we're going to make a better way to hold small or odd shaped parts when cutting them on my vertical bandsaw. Alright, so here's what we're working with. It's the popular Swag Off-Road port band table kit. Uh, this one has quite a few miles on it at this point, but I have a little Milwaukee saw in it. And a lot of times when I'm trying to cut smaller round things, the round stuff spins, small things are hard to hold. My thought was a sled that slides in those grooves and it'll actually move the whole table along through the cut. So I modeled this up right here and it has a couple runners to sit in the grooves uh, that'll be held on with fasteners and then on the top it has a fence and some threaded holes for fasteners that can hold toe clamps in place. So I uploaded the drawings to Send, Cut, Send, and I ordered them all cut out of quarter inch thick steel plate. Now for this bottom piece, I'm gonna have them drill and tap or tap the holes that they laser cut to accept fasteners for the toe clamps. And on these toe clamps themselves, I don't want them to bend, so I decided to go with a higher strength steel. So I changed those over to be 4130 and that should uh, help out to just give a little bit more strength on those components themselves. So I ordered those up and if you are ordering stuff off here, uh, check out my description with a discount code. It's not an affiliate link or anything, just an awesome discount that they give to viewers on the channel. I used a tab and slot design here so I can slide this fence right in here and that'll keep it lined up square and then I'll fixture it a little bit I think to keep it from moving around while I weld it. Then I have these guide rails to go underneath here. Let's go ahead and put this together. So I'm going to clean up the edges with the Scotch-Brite disc here because I didn't have them do any post-processing on the parts. And then while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and just lay down a pattern on this flat plate because I think that would look kind of cool. Now I'm using a chamfering tool here. This has been a really useful uh, pneumatic tool. It's almost like a router that puts a nice consistent chamfer on the edges. You could totally do this with a grinder. Uh, you don't need one of these, but it does help it come out consistent every time. Now those are the holes that they tapped in this bottom plate, but on these smaller parts, they don't actually offer tapping for parts that are smaller than a certain size. So I'm gonna tap them myself and I'll just put some cutting lube here on the tap and power tap it with the mill. Now this is always good for the comments, but in all reality, it comes out just fine. Now I am able to do that because of the type of tap that I use. This is called a spiral point tap if you haven't seen these. It has that extra cut on the edge which pushes the chip down so you don't have to reverse it over and over again. And it works really well for through holes whether you're power tapping or hand tapping. So those are really nice. Now I'll just crank through each of these and it makes a pretty quick work of threading these holes. And even on the 4130 it's no problem pushing right through there with the mill. Now these holes here need to be countersunk, and I don't know why I didn't have them do that. They offered, I, I probably just forgot. But uh, I'll just do that here on the drill press, and so I put a stop to keep it from rotating around and still give a little bit of movement to the plate to be able to center itself up as I go. One question I get a lot is, why does your workspace always look so clean? Well, the answer to that is that I clean up as I go. It's a lot easier to keep up than to catch up. But I'll go ahead and set up my machine here. I'm going to be using the Revolution 2500. It'll do MIG, ACDC TIG, everything. But I'm going to use DC TIG for this. And I'm just putting a square here that I'll lock on to the uh, vertical part. I just use these pliers from Harbor Freight. You know, every time they have one of those like 20 or 30% off items under $10, I go buy another pair of these. And they're actually pretty good, I think. It's one of the better, uh, better tools that they have there now. So I'll lock those in place and then I'll go ahead and clamp the whole thing down to the Siegmund uh, fixture table here and that will hold it square down to the bottom. Now, because I don't want it to distort uh, out of the way, see, it's going to have some weld in there, so it'll pull that fence backwards like that. I'll keep it locked in place through the whole welding process. So I'm laying down a few different uh, beads, just three different one inch lengths, which should be enough to hold everything in place without adding any distortion beyond what's necessary. So what I'm looking for is how does that separate when I release the clamps? 
and it did move a little bit, but it's pretty minor, so I think we're pretty good. There is some movement there, and if I wanted to prevent that, the way to do it would be to design in some gussets that would tack on the back side, and that could hold it, or to weld in the bottom. So I'm laying out my hardware here, and some sort of tray is a must have with a fixture table, because dropping those fasteners through the holes can be super frustrating. And uh, I'll just put these together here, hoping everything lines up. And so far, it seems to be good. The fasteners will sit down in the countersink there, and that'll keep a flat face on the top. And I got a length such that it lines up flush with the bottom as well. So it should work out. Now, I'm using some flanged bolts for the toe clamps here, and these slide through. Those will give it a good contact patch with the top without having to mess with a bunch of washers. So there will be one through the center and then one on the back to uh, pivot it down to be able to hold things. Should have pretty good reach with those four holes. Well, it's the moment of truth. Let's see how it fits. Um, slides on there. I'm off a little bit for the blade itself. If I put the right side down here, then it's jammed, but the left side moves over enough and slides in. Looks like I need to take off about 60 thou. Okay, so I'll switch this over for an end mill here. Are these bars hanging off the end, those would chatter like crazy. So what I'm actually gonna do is just loosen this up. I'll bring it over, sitting down on a parallel, and I'll run through half of it, lock the quill, and go for it. Let's just slide this over. Well, I gave it a quick deburr. It didn't come out too bad. So let's go ahead and reassemble it. Yeah, that's just what I was going for right there. All right, so I can clamp some parts right to the back wall here, just using a clamp, or I can use these toe clamps to be able to hold stuff down to be able to cut and modify it. I'm just gonna use a clamp to hold this uh, round stock in place here and see how it works to just trim a little bit off. So it worked okay, but it cut it a little bit crooked. And, and this saw pulls a little to the side, and so I'm often not feeding straight in. So that, that could be an issue, and maybe I need to come up with a way to rotate the saw a little bit so I can true that up. The, the types of things I'm, I'm looking to use it for are really a lot more like modifying hardware, like fittings. I can just clamp down on the nut there, put another toe clamp over here, and clamp it down so I can hold little pieces like like that and that's a really short cut so I don't think pulling to the side is going to be as big of a deal on the types of things I want to use it for shortcuts on fittings and things I think it'll be good you know honestly some of that blade pulling to the side it could just be a worn out blade I just threw that in but you could line it up pretty precisely well I really enjoyed this little project it didn't come out exactly as I'd hoped but I think it'll still be really useful and maybe I'll uh, revise a few things in a second version coming up and if you enjoyed this video or learned something let me know by hitting that thumbs up below and we'll see you next time